Hi everyone, it's me, Kendra Malcolm. Welcome to Art with Kendra. In today's lesson, we're going to learn how to draw a realistic eye. And I love drawing eyes, so this is a lot of fun. All right, let's get started. Very quickly, I wanna point out that the iris itself is 50% of the eye in terms of the eye ball that is visible. So if you were to add this little quadrant here, with this little quadrant here, you would get the same space as this. All right, we're gonna get started here. So I'm gonna start with a line. Now the line is going to help me to get the slant of the eye right. So I'm just gonna draw a very light line, ever so slanted up. Now when you're looking at your eye, make sure that your shape is reflecting the shape of the eye. So on this side, we're gonna have a little bit of a duct. I'm just gonna kind of draw in just a little bit of a tear duct there. There we go. Now I'm going to go follow the shape of the eye and you can fuss with this as much as you want. I find that I do light sketchy lines when I'm drawing and this just, you know, helps me to get my guides right. I might draw my first lines in, realize they're not quite right, and then I'll go back in and refine them. Now something that is very telling when you add in your eye shape is the iris. The iris, again, we know it has to be 50% of the eye. So let's start by drawing a perfect circle right on the inside of this shape. Again, we need to be kind of sketchy. We're drawing a perfect circle. Now we want this circle to take up 50% of the eye. So we can we know the proportions. So this will help us to double check our work. All right, so I think that's about 50%. You can always use your pencil to do a bit of a measure. So we have almost the same front and back. So that should be half. There we go. I have my preliminary shape in. So everything can be built around this shape. So all of those extra lines that we've added in, we can get rid of those. And we want to make sure we're doing our erasing before we get too into the drawing, the shading of the drawing. Um, because once we start erasing our shading, we get kind of textures we don't want. It's a little bit harder to get smooth colors, um, especially if you're not using a kneaded eraser. The whole time I've been drawing, I've been pressing really light so that I don't damage the page and uh, so that it is easy to erase these extra little pieces that we don't want. All right, so we have our overall shape. Now we want to add in those upper and lower lids. So the lower lid is quite visible because it's facing out towards us. So I'm just going to drop that in here. Now it should kind of float. It, it doesn't close off, so we need to kind of leave it as an opening, like it, like this area is not closed. So I'm just going to drop it in real light here. So this is the part of the lid that's touching the eye. This is the part of the lid that's facing out where our eyelashes are. And I'm going to do the same thing up here. Now this part of the eyelid is sometimes facing down. So it's a little bit thinner. It's not quite as visible, but it is usually there. So I'm going to drop in just a little tiny bit of a lid there. And when I go to finally add my lashes, I'm going to be doing it from this line, not the line touching the eye. But I will be curving them, so they still will appear to be going over the eye, but you're gonna see it, we're gonna do a curve there. Now let's go ahead and add in that pupil. Now we wanna make sure it's centered. I probably should have actually done this before I erased everything, but that's okay. So in a dark room, your pupil gets bigger. In a light room, your pupil gets smaller. Here we want really prominent highlights and shadows in the tear duct because it's a very moist area. Now, speaking of reflection, let's go ahead and add in the reflection um, for this eye. I want my light source to be classical, so I'm going to have it coming in from the side, which means that my highlight is going to maybe be right about here. This is different than the reference. We don't need to draw exactly what the reference is. And I might even do a secondary highlight right here. These are going to be white areas. Now they are going to be the brightest part of our drawing. And I'm going to erase the pupil on the inside of that and just make sure that the outline isn't too dark. Now we're almost ready to start adding in our shading. I'm going to erase my arrow because I do want to add kind of an upper, like a crease in the, in the lid area. Now not everybody has this and I actually do not. So that is our structure. This is probably the most important thing to get right. So if you're still working on this, take the time you need. Now I am going to be starting off right in here. I'm gonna be adding my darkness. Now it's gonna be a little bit darker. I'm in the iris and I'm just kind of moving in a circle. I'm just gonna establish my lights and darks. Now this whole area here is actually gonna be quite dark because there's a cast shadow. 
Now it looks like I'm doing a line here, which I am at the moment, but I'm going to I'm going to blend that out. I don't want there to be a hard line there. There really isn't even a hard line here where I'm kind of coloring in the iris. I'll zoom out just a bit more. There we go. If you really look at an eye, you'll see there's a little bit of a blend into the eye white, even in that space there. So our light is coming from above, coming from the, the upper right. So that means that we're going to have a little bit of a highlight here and a little bit of a shadow on the other side. So we do want to be thinking about that lighting as we go. I'm kind of just circle shading into that donut highlight. So it's a darker around the outer edge. And then it's getting lighter as we get towards the center. And then as we hit center, it's dark. And I'm just going to shade around my highlights. I don't want to outline them. I just want to create value, meeting value. That's how we're going to get our shape definition here today. This is pretty repetitive, so I'm just going to fast forward my video, but you can pause yours as needed. Now, so I have my iris kind of figured out. I'm not too worried about the pupil yet. Um, what I'm gonna do is maybe hop over here into our tear duct. Now the tear duct is both dark and light, and we need those to be, kind of be right beside each other. And the reason for that is because when you have darks and lights next to each other, it gets shiny. It gets the illusion of shininess. So just adding in a little bit of darkness into that space, but it's mostly light, mostly light shadow there. I'm very lightly going to add a little bit of shadow into the tear duct. I'll go a little further out here into the um, white of the eye. The white of the eye is colored. And this is a, this is especially important because we want our, we want our highlight to really pop. The highlight should be the whitest part of the eye. So right now I'm kind of adding in those cast shadows. This is our highlight side, so I don't want to go too aggressive with it. And this is our shadow side, and it's going to look really dark for now, but that's okay. All right, we got a little bit of a shadow even underneath our lid here. So I'm just going to lightly add in a bit of a shadow there. And this is because the lid is coming out. So this is a cast shadow. Just a little bit. We want to do all our shading before we add in things like our lashes. And this shadow here is going to be right now it's a line. We want to create a value. So I'm just kind of fading that line into a value. Now, as we're coming forward, we're going to get a highlight on there. So we don't want to go right to there, but there is going to be a little bit of a shadow both above and below, mostly below, but it is a rounded fold. So even above, we get just a little bit of a shadow. All right. Now, if we're going to be picky, we could even start to add a little shading here. I don't know how, how much outside of the face I want to get, but I'll add just a little bit of shading here. So I'll add a little bit of that kind of base shadow. So right now I'm just using the side of my pencil and dropping in shadow really quick. All right. So I think that is giving us our, our base shadow. So this is the 4B, and, or the 6B, sorry. I will be coming back to that pencil. But I want to switch over to an HB because the HB is a harder pencil. So it's going to give me a blend. It's going to blend this in. It's going to kind of even things out. And it doesn't give me as dark of value. So it's a nice, a nice pencil to kind of do those more subtle shadows. So here's that highlight. I don't want to color over that. And I'm just doing circle shading to even out my tones here. Remember, we're drawing a dark eye today. All right, so I'm going to be using the HB to soften these, these shadows. I'm going to leave it white right beside there. There we go. Now I'm just going to quickly fast forward through this section so that my video doesn't get too long, but all I'm doing here is softening my 6B with my HB. So I'm just kind of going over top of my existing shading, almost using my HB as a smudging device. Now what we're going to do is add in our textures. So I'm going to go back to my 6B because I want those textures to be pretty dark. And all of the textures are going to stem from the center here. Now eventually I'm going to color that black. So what I'm going to do is just draw some guides going out here. And this is going to help me create a nice even texture. All right, so I kind of see where I need to go back to. So I'm going to start on the outer edge and I'm going to do small flicks going in. And I'm going to try to stop these flicks, or at least most of them, before they hit the center of that donut. I keep calling it a donut because it kind of has a donut feel to it, especially with that highlight, but it's the iris. 
I'm going to also do it from the center going out. And this is going to help to give us that eye texture. And I'm just going to fast forward here to just putting that texture in. So we have kind of established a little bit of those textures. Now in the eye, sometimes we also have dark spots. So what I'm going to do is just add a few little dots. Just a few. Those are maybe too dark. little dots in the eye, just a couple. So that's what I'm going to do now is I'm going to darken my pupil. So I'm doing circles. And I'm pressing kind of hard, but I'm not pressing super duper hard. I'm seeing that my... I'm moving in a circle. That's so that I don't get a build up. There's our nice iris. And I'm just going to darken right here a little bit more. I could be fussy with this all day long, but I don't really need to be. Now, eyelashes. Big common area of mistakes are eyelashes. I'm going to just do a rough here. Here's our eyelid above the eye. Now, a lot of people will not even draw two eyelids. The big mistake is you do this and then lashes end up going like this. And that is, that is not what you want to do. So we have our two eyelids, which is good. Now, lashes swoop. So they kind of almost have like check marks. And as you go through the eye, they kind of switch positions because this is a rounded shape here, right? So the ones here start on this outer lid and they actually almost go down. They go very far over and they're like little J's, little J's. And then as you start to get more centered, they do start to curve up, but they're still those J's. They still have a curve to them. Sometimes they're even just coming straight out. When they're coming straight out, they barely go past your upper lid at all. Sometimes they even go down. So here's that eye. So you can see here, starts here, goes down and up, down and up. Here we have clump, 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 negative space, right? Look at that. No eyelashes there. Clump, clump. And you see these ones start here and they kind of swoosh out. They're actually angled down. And these ones are swooshing and they're not even crossing. They're actually going down here. Now, let's look at the bottom lid while we're in here. These ones curve out like a little rainbow. As we go here, they're still curving, but they're coming forward. And then these ones are few and far between. But if we do see them, they're going to curve that way. All right. Eyelashes start here. Swoosh. Longest ones are right at the edge. cluster. Sometimes what I'll do is I'll just kind of go through and draw a few here and there to reflect the direction because the direction is tricky like especially here these ones these ones almost come right at you so you barely see them. So your check mark almost has to go like a zigzag it almost has to go right on top of itself there. clusters starting at that upper lid and eyelashes are thicker when they are at the skin right they're thicker at the skin so um as they get out they get thinner they get worn so you'll notice I'm kind of flicking my wrist and that gives me um that eyelash pressure the eyelash pressure hard to say that all right so there's some eyelashes on the top I could probably add like one or two more right there we go. And on the bottom, I'm going to do the same thing. That one got a bit long, but I'm doing those kind of rainbows. And a couple of those are going to cluster. And then here, I'm just going to start to go the other way with it, but I don't want to add too many. And look how short I'm making them. I'm just barely doing ticks on the page. Don't want to evenly space them out. That would be unnatural looking. So there we have that. And then, you know, if we had more time, I'd shade out from there. But that's what our lesson is going to focus on today is just that eye. I hope you enjoyed the lesson. Thank you so much for drawing with me. And I'll see you again soon. Bye, everyone.